I am told, is that there are um, disagreement in the contract over events, expenses, and basically transparency related to those expenses. Terrence Crawford agreed to take the short end of the split and walk, work off of no guarantee, and he wants to be able to just, you know, have some transparency there related to it since he's going to be working off of the net revenue. And so far, they have been unable to clear this up. It feels like Al Heyman is holding up the deal right now. He advises Spence. Spence wants it. Crawford wants it. And for Crawford to agree to work off of just a per split shows you how badly he wants this, in my opinion. Hold on a second. You mean to tell me, because anyone who follows the way, you know, Hollywood or anything, there's no such thing as the net. It's all the growth. I mean, certainly if you don't have oversight of the books, right, approving expenses or certainly at least knowing where all the money's going, no one would ever agree to a net. The fact that Crawford's, wor you, you work off the gross. But if you're working off the net, then certainly if what you're reporting is accurate, then Crawford would be out of his mind not to insist on that. And you're telling me that that's what's holding it up, that Al Heyman, and, and he, who's advising Errol Spence, is not giving Terrence Crawford oversight over expenses or giving him transparency to the books, you know, of the books. He's not letting him take a look at the books. And that's why Crawford won't sign, because that sounds to me, Mike, like a duck. That sounds like Al Heyman doesn't think that his guy is going to win and is ducking Terrence Croft, ducking Terrence Croft, ducking Terrence Croft, ducking Terrence Crawford. So what do I do YouTube? It's your boy King David in this thing and I'm back at y'all again with another video. <laughs> this ass motherfucker. What okay, so before we get going on a video, man, y'all know what to do. Go ahead, hit the like button and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe one time for your boy so we can continue to grow like we need to grow on this channel. You know what I mean? You won the belt with nobody. All right, so cool, man. Y'all see what the title of the video is. It has the duck been certified? Is the duck official? Is the duck official because it damn sure looks like the duck is official. It damn sure look like the duck got a stamp of approval on it, right? It damn sure looked to me like Earl Spitz Jr. has successfully ducked the shit out of Terrence Bud Crawford. He's an email chain. He's fighting because right. somebody mailed him the belt. So let's start from the beginning, man. I mean, let's start from the very beginning because y'all saw the interview. Y'all saw the interview. According to the interview by Max Kellerman. According to the reports by Mike Coppinger. Right? Which I may add is the same Mike Coppinger that reports a lot of the numbers that PBC drops, right? A lot of these pay-per-view numbers that a lot of Earl Spence fans like to live and die by. Mike Coppinger is one of the guys who reports them. So according to Mike Coppinger, right? Or like they like to say, Mike Coppinger, when the narrative doesn't suit their agenda. According to Mike Coppinger, according to Bernie the Boxer, according to Blue Blood Sports TV, who's a known Earl Spence fan, Terrence Bud Crawford has accepted all demands and all conditions in all terms from Earl Spence Jr. I know, I know. Right? And I say Earl Spence Jr. because I know a lot of dudes like to put the blame on PBC. They like to say PBC Al Heyman, PBC Al Heyman, right? That's what a lot of these niggas like saying, right? They like putting the blame on PBC. But at the end of the day, doesn't the PBC and Al Heyman work for Earl Spence Jr.? Isn't Earl Spence Jr. his own boss, according to his own words? And also, according to the words of Deontay, the bronze bomber Wilder, when he says... Al don't hold back his fighters on things. He may give his suggestion on this and that or whatever. But what pretty much who we want, we gonna get, so... So I'm really not trying to hear shit about PBC and Al Heyman being a hurdle or a burden when it comes to these negotiations because at the end of the day, they work for Earl Spence Jr. Right? Oh, look at this guy. They work for Earl Spence Jr. So I'm not trying to hear that shit. 
I mean, it ain't my fault that Earl Spence signed to the wrong promoter, <laughs> right? Ain't that what a lot of you niggas said about Bud Crawford when he was on top rank that he was with the wrong promoter? You know what I'm saying? It ain't my fault that Earl Spence signed to the wrong promoter. That's his ass, right? You won the belt with nobody. Nevertheless, I digress. There are three major takeaways that I get from this article and from both Max Kellerman and Mike Coppinger just now, right? There's three major takeaways that I get from them, right? Takeaway number one. I think this is the final straw. I think this is the final straw for Bud Crawford. I think he's just about ready to throw in the towel on this fight. I think Bud Crawford is just about ready to throw in the towel on this fight. Every single report that we get is more and more absurd. The demand is more and more ridiculous. Bet you don't get it. Bet you don't get it. I hope you don't get it. <laughs> Bitch ass motherfucker. When I Every single report that we get, every single concession that we hear about Bud Crawford taking, it gets more and more ridiculous, right? I think this is the final one. I think this is it. Y'all need to fully understand how ridiculous it would be for Bud Crawford to take this, right? In addition to the no guarantee, in addition to the 35%, in addition to the rematch clause with the B-side in the rematch. Y'all need to fully understand how ridiculous this, this, this offer is, right? For Bud Crawford to have no transparency on the books. Essentially, he's taking PBC's word for it. On how much he's to get paid. Who mans is this? Get him the fuck Based out on here. the revenue. But wait a minute, there's a huge contradiction there, right? Because if I'm getting paid based on the revenue, then I should know what the revenue is, right? And then if you're telling me that you're going to pay me a certain amount, then that's what guaranteed money is. But Terrence Bud Crawford's not getting that. Terrence Bud Crawford's not getting guaranteed money. He's getting money based on the revenue. But not just the revenue, y'all. The net revenue, meaning minus the overhead expenses. Jesus Christ. Now, what could overhead expenses be? Overhead expenses could be anything as dumb as a dinner for Earl Spence on a Saturday night between Earl Spence and Al Heyman, right? Oh, look at this guy. Those could be expenses. Expenses could be movie tickets, right? For all the participants after the event, right? You won the event with nobody. <laughs> this ass motherfucker. When the I expenses could be something as trivial as bumper stickers for the people who attended the event. That's how trivial the expenses could be. So you mean to tell me that not only does Bud Crawford have to take a 35% split, not only does he have to have no guarantee, not only does he get a rematch clause where even if he wins, he still stays the B-side, but now he has to take your word for it on how much the revenue is and has no say over what's spent as far as the overhead expenses that he's supposedly supposed to be getting paid off. Who mans is this? Get him the fuck out of here. I think this is it, y'all. Ain't nobody taking that shit. Ain't nobody in their right mind taking that shit. Right? It's absolutely ridiculous for anybody to even be subjected to that kind of bullshit. Yet and still, here we are. Yet and still, here we are, y'all. So I think this is the final straw. So that's my first takeaway. Right? Knows he can't be 
My second takeaway is that I think the world is finally starting to see how cowardly Earl Spence Jr. is. I think the world is finally starting to see how much of a duck Earl Spence Jr. is. How much Earl Spence don't want to fight Terrence Bud Crawford. For Max Kellerman to go on national TV, national TV, and call Earl Spence a duck. That sounds like Al Heyman doesn't think that his guy is going to win and is ducking Terrence Crawford. The fact of the matter is, people who were Earl Spence fans are finally starting to see Earl Spence for truly who he is, which is a coward. Which is a nigga that don't want no smoke with a Terrence Bud Crawford. Not because he's scared of Terrence Bud Crawford's shadow, right? He don't want no smoke with Terrence Bud Crawford because he's worried about what Bud Crawford would do to his career. He's worried about what Bud Crawford would do to his brand. He's worried about what a loss to Bud Crawford would do to his ability to generate money for his family. And that's an understandable fear. Spence knows he can't be Crawford. Nevertheless, it don't take away the fact that Earl Spence Jr. is scared to death of a Terrence Bud Crawford in the world is finally, finally seeing this situation for what it is, right? So that's my second takeaway. Because that sounds to me, Mike, like a duck. <laughs> bitch ass motherfucker. What happened? And then my third takeaway from this is this fight definitely ain't happening this year. It definitely ain't happening this year. Not at all. Right? Because if we're still talking about things like this in October for a fight that's supposed to be in November. I think it's safe to say that there's just not enough time in the day. I think it's safe to say that there's not enough time in the day to make this fight happen in 2022. And it may happen in 2023. You know what I mean? Or not at all. Because honestly and truly, the farther that this fight is pushed back, the less likely it is to, ha to happen. And if I'm Terrence Bud Crawford, I've been out of the ring almost a year. A year now. Coming in November. Last time he was in the ring with a Showtime Sean Porter, it's time to get active. It's time to get in the ring with somebody, even if it ain't a Earl Spence Jr. I know, I know that. You can't sit there and stall and hold up your career for a fight that may or may not happen. For a fighter that clearly don't want to fight based on his history of not wanting to fight. Spence knows he can't be Crawford. Terrence Bud Crawford need to do something and Earl Spence Jr. on his side has mandatory obligations. How long is Igis Stanione supposed to wait? How long is Jerome Boots Ennis supposed to wait? How long is Keith One Time Thurman supposed to wait? Right? They all supposed to sit down and wait while Earl Spence Jr plays duck games in a negotiation table that sounds like al Heyman doesn't think that his guy is gonna win and is ducking terrence crawford i'm in the mindset right now that based on this interview based on what's happening right now that the fight ain't happening at very least this year you know what i mean but those are my takeaways man let me know what y'all think man you know what i'm saying let me know what y'all think. Hit it up in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And everybody, and I do mean everybody, be sure to hit that goddamn like button. But until next time, man, I'm all at y'all. Peace. Mike, Spence and Crawford are fighting. Who wins? I think after seeing their fight, Porter and Crawford, I think you've got to lean towards Crawford now. Sugar Ray with Spence and uh, Crawford. Thank you, Parker. Crawford's a bad boy, but Spence, you know, Spence, Spence is a pressure cooker, so 
If he can maintain with Crawford early, then he can make a good fight. But if he ain't on his game, it might be right. Crawford reminds me of me, bro. So I'm pretty sure you know how I feel about that. Ain't nobody else going to say that, but I'm going to say it. The way he approached that shit, he don't see none of them guys. He don't care nothing about none of them guys. He'll... Ha! Got him! Ha! 